Today we are going to be checking out a couple of Rotel products. Today we've got a preamp, which is the Rotel RSP1576 Mark II. The second one is an amplified processor. It is the RAP1580 Mark II. So shout out to Rotel for sending these guys over for me to review. Thank you guys. First one we're going to check out is the preamp processor. Let's get this thing unboxed. So inside the box, we have a one sheet Rotel instructional. It's a little connection guide and setup guide. RCA cables, trigger cable, ethernet cable, some more documentation. Here are the rack mount screws, the rack calibration mic, and here is the remote control and batteries. The power cord, and tucked away into the styrofoam, we do have rack mounts. So if you do want to mount this in your rack, it's nice that they included some rack mounts. Nice touch, Rotel. Okay, so size-wise, this measures 17 inches wide. It's 5.5 inches tall by 13.5 inches in depth. In the upper left corner, we have the power button, a USB input, one HDMI input, your selection buttons, in the center is the volume knob, your input selection, and in the center is the display along with the Rotel embossed logo in the front fascia. Let's swing it around and see what we have in the back. Here we have two HDMI outputs with support for ARC. We've got six HDMI 2.0 ins. We've got six digital inputs, three optical and three coax, a PC USB input, an RS-232, a LAN connection, trigger outs, a pair of balanced inputs, unbalanced inputs for phono, tuner, CD, and auxiliary, a 7 channel input, and here you have preouts for all 14 channels. So there are no XLR balanced outputs for this guy. And on the very far right you have the main power switch and the power inlet. So the new thing for the Mark II, if you guys watched my original review which I did the 1576 Mark 1 a few years back. Uh, this one actually has Dirac Live built into it, so that's cool. The last last generation did not have room correction, had a bunch of PEQs, so you had to take your own measurements and uh, work that in as well. Uh, that was my own personal one that I had, the 1576. This one here obviously is a loner, but I'm expecting this one to sound a lot better. First one was alright, but I'm sure this one is going to be a lot better. Now this is a 7.1.4 processor with support for Dolby Atmos and DTSX. It is a processor, so you will need some amplifiers to power all the channels. Now let's check out the 1580. So this one comes double boxed. Outside one is the brown box and the inner one is the white box with green lettering. And on the top portion of the foam, you will find that there are some mounting brackets stuffed inside the styrofoam here. So these are rack mounts. So if you're gonna rack mount this in your rack, that's a nice touch that they included both of these guys. On the bottom of the box, we have the remote control, some batteries, the rack calibration mic, and the rack mounting screws. So this guy's pretty heavy. This thing weighs 50 pounds, so it is a beast. Size-wise, it measures the standard 17 inches wide, by 7 inches tall, by 18 and a half inches deep. So it's a pretty big unit. Let's take a look up front. We've got your power button, IR sensor, directional pad, input selection, menu button, and the back button. Front HDMI input, along with a USB input. Here we've got a seven inch front panel display. The volume knob is on the right. And on the bottom we have the surround button, the display button, and the mute button. Let's swing it around and check out the back. We have two HDMI outputs. Both of them should support 4K HDR output. We have eight HDMI 2.0 ins, three optical inputs, and three coax ins, a pair of balanced inputs, four unbalanced inputs, multi-channel unbalanced ins, and here we've got 14 unbalanced pre-outs. On the end here is the main power switch, the power inlet, and on the bottom are your binding posts for all seven channels. Specs for this guy, it is rated at seven channels at 140 watts per channel, all channels driven, at 4 ohms, or 100 watts per channel, all channels driven at 8 ohms. Or if you want to do 2 channel with it, this is 4 ohms at 200 watts per channel, or 
at 8 ohms, 135 watts per channel. Also, the new thing for the Mark II is that it does come with the Direct Live LE. That's why you get a calibration mic. I believe the Mark I did not have that, so that is going to be like the main feature of this guy. Now, this is a 7.1.4 processor with power for only seven channels. If you want to run four high channels, you will need an external amplifier. This does support Dolby Atmos and DTSX, and it does have Class AB amps built into it. So I'm excited to get these pairs hooked up in the home theater. I'm probably going to do a separate video for each one of these, but I just wanted to get this out of the way. Unboxing for both Rotel's flagship processor and amplified processor. So let's go ahead, get this thing set up. I'll be back in a few videos to give you some thoughts and impressions.